one tournament. During the actual tournament, Tomo was like, he used Guile, and he was like, I'm gonna beat this next opponent only using the short button. And he did it, and it was like no problem, and he just destroyed him with Guile using the short, and didn't throw a sonic boom, just walked around short, jump short, low short, raise no the way. and he beat the guy. And it was like not even hard for him to do it. I wonder if part of the reason he left the scene was because it was just child. <laughs> he was actually, simply being too good for his own good. Yeah, I, well, I actually heard that he, he got the, the girlfriend. And... <laughs> the story is better. Yeah. He's like, oh, this mundane. Yeah, exactly. Time bores me. But Tomo basically became... He's like, I will beat him with no button. <laughs> yeah. he, will, he will inflict his own damage exactly. upon himself. His name was Tomo Ohira. Like um, Whoa, he, yeah, Tomo. yeah, like um, he was supposedly like um, you know, it's like he was a legend back in Street Fighter Two days, all the way up until Hyper Fighting. Like I found out about him through Game Pro back in the day before I started playing competitively. Before I started playing competitively, I mean, like apparently, like he won every tournament except for two tournaments, and the only person to beat him was Mike Watson. I think somebody else. I forget who. Um, yeah, Jeff Schaefer. Huh? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was Schaefer. But, but 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 yeah but yeah like he was on a winning streak just like how Justin he was Justin Long of today pretty much and she fighter too so he's definitely legendary like Mike Watson's also an, uh, another legend I really like, Tomo was the first legend yeah Tomo was the first legend for sure Tomo was the first legend Mike Watson second legend maybe Vias yeah Vias by, by, by third and, and like Eddie Lee's fourth what happened huh Eddie Lee's fourth yeah. You said, you said but but ja Japan has their whole other like yeah like yeah yeah J J Japan has like their own next shit but where it's like they keep stuff among themselves and like you know you don't really read the results unless you can read Japanese you know and translate it well, I'm, I'm like they're seeing yeah it's tough but you know there's a lot of strong players out there that like, you have never heard of. Did not play anyone else. I've never even seen him play anyone else. He doesn't do it. He just plays Rue and Gal. It's total purist. I played Daigo. Daigo's good. But Daigo's no Tomo. <laughs> okay. I had won quite a few tournaments with, with Blanca. Tomo, you know, since he didn't come that often, and I was ranked number one, Tomo came back, you know, after a couple months, he'd, he'd come every, he wouldn't come that often. Maybe, you know, he'd, he'd come two two times in a row, then he'd take two months off. This is the moment in, in Street Fighter history that I'll never forget. I did, get, I got Tomo in the corner, I got him in the corner in like 10 seconds. I started jumping up and down in the corner, and he's throwing fireballs, and I'm kicking him in the face, and he's like, huh. He learns right away. He, he can't throw a fireball when he's in the corner. And the most ridiculous thing happened. I, I think I've never, ever, I've never seen anything like it. This kid is just a prodigy. Okay. I jump. He fakes. I jump up straight up. I remember like this was this morning, vividly. I jump straight up. The kid walks slightly forward with Rue, and right as I'm coming down, he does a spin kick, and my goes right through it because it's invincible for a split second and the spin kick hits me and I can't block it and I'm thinking what the hell nobody and he does this out of the blue because I don't practice with Tomo I don't really talk to him he just shows up and does this on the fly in the game like a freaking learning computer get him back in the corner I'm doing it again he's getting you know he's, he, he can't do anything does it again then he starts to cross up madness and he just clean he just killed me game two i'm like okay maybe he got lucky try it again he's got this timing dude he walks towards thinking it's like damn <laughs> so, so i get murdered so then i switch to scott he beat me 3-0 and then everyone's like damn tomo really is that good and i thought to myself man i don't think i'll ever be as good as this kid tomo would play first person shooter for a while you, i can tell you right now dude tomo at counter strike was just Definitely one of the world's best players at Counter Strike. Phenomenal player. You've never seen reflexes like that. I mean, just, just fantastic. Jump at your opponent with a late roundhouse kick. 
Then as soon as you land, jump again. On your way up, hit your opponent again with another roundhouse, then immediately follow with a hurricane kick. To help you with the timing, here's the replay in real time. So in other words, you have to practice to the point where the moves and combinations are second nature. So you can go beyond the technique and study the psychology of your opponent. Right, right. Then you can psych your opponents out with stuff you know they won't be expecting. You know, the same thing I'm always doing to you. I'm starting to hate this guy. Don't worry. This tape is going to give you tons of psych out strategy. What's going on everybody? How you guys doing? Yeah. Feels good to be back. Been out of the Street Fighter. Oh, there you go. I got the got the, the the bunny ears already, but I've been out of the Street Fighter community for a good 20 years. 20 years. And it feels good to be back. I can see everything. Everyone's uh, typing. What's up, B Revolver? What's up, Zero Cool? That's yes, good. I am real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you no, you cannot suck my penis. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, but it yeah. does, I, I appreciate the love, and it feels good to be back, man. It feels good to be talking to everyone. You know what? But your girlfriend can. <laughs> oh, easy, easy. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, man, hit them up on the uh, little chat thing. We'll talk about some questions. If you guys want to talk about anything, let me know. Uh, yes, I am real, not just an urban legend. I do, hear, I do see a lot of little articles that talk about legend, and I think that's just cold word for being really old or yeah. almost dead. Yep. So I don't know which one it is. Uh, but I, I am starting to feel a little bit old. He, he, this guy has another question. Says, "Okay, why why is hyper fighting better than super turbo?" Hyper fighting. Let's do it. Hyper fighting, the one we were just playing. We were just playing right now. Oh man, you know. So why is I, that better than super turbo? I loved hyper fighting, man. Super turbo. You know, when we got into the super moves, for me personally, the super moves, I, I didn't really get into the super moves because for me, I didn't like building up a lead. And then seeing one move all of a sudden just wipe out like half my health. You know, I just I just didn't like that. To me that wasn't but that wasn't the more skillful player winning from when I was playing. You know, also it's my like opinion. also to add on to that, if you're playing hyper fighting and you got a big lead and you're sitting back, that other guy can't just walk up next to you and get, get all the pressure on you. He's gotta work for it. He's gotta use skill. That's In true. super turbo, I could just super get next to you and now I've got the pressure back on you for That's my true. next to you. Very true, very true. So you gotta work. Yeah, I mean, to the, the thing I would compare it to, right, super moves and things like that, is if, you know, in basketball, right, say there was a, say there was a half court shot that was worth 20 points. So say the better team built up this long lead, they were up by 20 points, yeah. and at the last second, the last second of the game, they get a half court shot that was worth 20 points, nah. and then the team that's not as good wins. You know, Wait, you know what no, I'm saying? It's like, it's like getting super shoes and, and doing a slam dunk from half the court, but the slam dunk is 20 points. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, same yeah. difference, so. But uh, let's get some shout outs out of the way first. I want to give a shout out to uh, Old Masta from Canada, one of the best Street Fighter players in Hyper uh, probably in the world. Uh, at the current time, I want to get a shout out to DJ Reminis in uh, New Zealand and all the New Zealand boys, all the boys from Europe. Everyone, big shout out for me and Tomo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Keep the keep the questions clean. Let's let's. Uh, okay. Tomo, how drunk did Capcom? Wait. Whoa. When you. Okay. All right. So tell us a little bit about when you went to Capcom and you made a VHS with oh that my with that like corny guy that that was like all goofy <laughs> and he was like, oh Tomo, burr, 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 like. Oh man. So, like so what was that guy's name? Yeah. So for the people that don't know, man, probably in about 1993, uh, Capcom called me up and said, hey Tomo, we want you to make a video for us, a strategy video. And uh, yeah, most of the people that were in this video had mullets. And <laughs> I don't, I don't want to hear anything about it because everyone watching right now that was alive in the 90s also had a mullet. That was great. Hey, thanks a lot, Eric. Hey, no problem. So, I hear you know Tomo. Are you kidding? Tomo and I are like that. I'm sort of like his Yoda when it comes to Street Fighter. I taught him a lot of his cooler moves. I mean, you can't really see me, but I'm over here to the left. Yeah, right. I'm right here. This guy's a nerd, dude. He said he watched that tape every night before he goes to sleep. Oh, I appreciate I think, that. I think you took the place of a girlfriend in his life, man. Oh, that's okay. You know, it's all good. But, yeah, uh, yeah so we made this video, and there's this dude that uh, he had he had no idea what Street Fighter was. He was a hired actor, and he kind of followed me around, and we made some strategies and stuff like that. But, yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. I think that's how maybe some of the people have, uh, maybe some of the people watching this have seen that. So I appreciate that. Hey, James, Eric said I'd find you here. I'm Danny. Oh yeah, hey, you're the guy who knows Tomo. Right. Hey Tomo, you know this guy, right? <laughs> no, I've never seen him before. <sighs> and it was actually in Blockbuster, people could rent it. That was a trip, man, to see that. And this is all in 1993, so. Yeah. 
Yeah, you could you could rent uh, Tomo at Blockbuster. That was true. Yeah. So, but I played '91 and '94. How long did you play for, man? You played for a little bit longer, right? I think I think I played from like 1991 to '94 seriously when when you were in the thing, and then I played uh, up to Alpha 2 for fun. But after the Super Moves came out, you know, me and you both we didn't really like it, but yeah. it was still fun because you know it's still a lot of our friends play that, so it was no big deal. Yeah, but. Yeah, man, Street Fighter was a lot different back then, man. I look at these tournaments right now, and I'm trying to look right now. I think there's a stat on here that tells us how many people are watching. We got 2,503 people watching right now. 2,503 people watching right now, man. And, I, and I'm telling you, way back in the day, if we had a tournament that had about 150 people, we were just like, oh, my God, this is the most people we've ever had in our entire lives in a tournament. <laughs> it's crazy, wasn't it? You remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like... Back in 1991, when the when Street Fighter 2 came out, you go to the arcade. There's 25 quarters across the whole the whole thing, and there's like eight machines. And there's this arcade in Pasadena, Pac-Man arcade. Oh, Pac-Man arcade. You just go there arcade. all night long, and there's like all the Asian meat you could you want just <laughs> li lined up, just ready to get beat down. Uh. You know, at Street Fighter, it was great and. Back then, Tomo was really like a, only a, a, a two-dimensional player. He only played Rue and Guile. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. I'm seeing this right now. It said Evo had 3,000 people this year. Yeah. Can you believe that, man? 3,000 people. That's just, that, that's incredible to me. I mean, I just, I can't even understand what that would look like. A 3,000 people Street Fighter tournament. That's just crazy to me. But, yeah. And I give it up to Evo and the Street Fighter community for keeping this going for so long, man. It just, it's amazing to me. You know, it's been, I guess it's been, what, I guess, what, 21 years is what it be? 21, 22 years? It's been 20, 20, 20 years and eight months or something since Hyper Fighting came out, something yeah. like that. So, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely feeling old, and I'm seeing the comments here. I, know I am married. I'm not exactly a family man, but I am married. Uh, working full-time. Jeff works full-time, too. I work for Toyota. Jeff works for Honda. So even to this day, we still work for competitive brands, right? Still competing, yep. right? That's right. Look at that. Jeff, thanks for all your advice you gave me over in YouTube. Look at that, man. Woo! What do you tell these guys in YouTube? I tell them how to be like you. Like me? <laughs> yeah, you better <laughs> I tell, tell them. them how to get the disciplined mind to compete to be the world's best at something. Oh, I like that, man. Look at that. I look yeah. like I like like I look like John Carl Van Dam from the SF movie, man. Does that mean you look kind of like Guile? Me? Yeah, man. You need, all you need is the hair, right? And then and throw some sonic booms, man. You look just like him. Oh my God! Talk about the pinball tournament. Oh okay. my God! Okay, all right. Let me tell you. Let me tell you guys. Okay, there's pinball professionals at that tournament. So, I went down there with Tomo. This is a new pinball game that never was released before. They just brought it out just for this tournament. It was a Capcom official sponsored tournament. In the final of that tournament, Tomo was. First of all, you're you're just completely stupid with pinball. Tomo has a natural gift, so he picked up pinball in literally an hour, and in the final, on ball one, he has like 33 free balls, and like the most, po like the points are just like humongous, like over 30 free balls on ball one, and just kept on, could could have kept on playing literally in, until he until he got tired and had to sleep, I guess, <laughs> and then he won the pinball tournament, and also uh. the Street Fighter tournament. And it was just game over. Yeah, this Nobody is, uh, had a chance. This is definitely making me feel the oldest because I don't even know that anybody watching this plays pinballs yeah. anymore. But, uh, yeah, there was a tournament back in probably must have been 92. 92. And um, what you Champion. had to do, it was it was a Street Fighter tournament, but there was a the, the arcade version Street Fighter and the pinball version Street Fighter. And you had yep. to win both sides to win the entire tournament. That's right. And of course, we never really played pinball, but the night before, Everyone was playing Street Fighter, the arcade game. Yeah. Right? But I, I thought pinball was – I like pinball. Yeah. So I was playing pinball the whole night the night before, and then the next day it turned out uh, I was fortunate, fortunate enough to win both the pinball side and the arcade side. And, uh, man, that was that was a, a great memory. Thanks for bringing that up, man. So I don't even know. Do they, do they even have pinball anymore? I don't even know. They, you know, probably not. But So just to prove that that wasn't a fluke, when I opened a business and Tomo used to work with me, I, t I challenged them to beat my, my Microsoft Windows pinball score. So Tomo, for the first time he ever played it, same deal, dude. Ball one, he's got like 30-something free balls. Can play all day. I said, man, we got work to do. Just hang it up. <laughs> Literally playing like four hours in a row on one ball with 30-something free balls. 
just so that you guys know, it wasn't a fluke. Oh, man. He did it again, and that was like eight years later. Oh, we got no practice. Okay, so we got to talk about this because I wasn't around for this, but I think it happened right here at this arcade was the match between you Me? And, and the man himself that came down from Japan, right? Daigo Umar. Daigo Umar. So, so I don't, I mean, you know, that Daigo came, came after the time that I was playing, so I wasn't really familiar. But uh, I heard you guys had a little match over here. Talk about that for a minute. Well, you got like two types of players. You got, you got players that will play anyone at any time, and then you got players that will only play whether it's for money or a crown or something like that, and they don't want to risk losing because they don't want to lose reputation. Well, let me tell you, I don't care. <laughs> so we that. come on down. We got Daigo Imahara. We got the whole posse from Japan. Jeff hasn't played in a while. That's okay. Bring it on. So, yeah, I sat down with them. I, you know, I probably got absolutely destroyed the first five or six games in a row. Um, we played a 20-game 20, 20 match, 20 games in a row. So after about the sixth game, I started to win more and more and more. I think I took half the sets. And the last five games was all me, and it was perfects and dominance and cornered and just good zoning and good strategy. And it was, it was just like a... Uh, you know, I guess he brought the best out in me, and you, you got to play against the best to, to have that happen to you sometimes. And what version was this in again? That was called uh, AE, which is like, uh, and it was the first time I've ever played that. Uh, Anniversary Edition, I think it's called. So it's got like, I think every version of Street Fighter up to Super Turbo, I think. And so I, I mainly picked like uh, Championship Edition Guile, and uh, uh, I think I used uh, Hyper Fighting Blanca, and I used like uh, Super Edition uh, Sagat. And Daigo used, like, all the Super Turbo characters because they're just, you know, I, I think definitely if you want to win, you use Super Turbo characters because the Super moves are just uh, too good to pass up, especially with uh, Balrog and Rue.
you two ever consider playing competitively again? I'll, I'll let you take that one first, Jeff. I okay. don't know. What do you think, man? Well, <laughs> is that going to happen? The, the way the way the way life evolves is that when we're young and we're in perhaps high school and college, and we have a lot of time to hang out with our buddies and play games and talk crap and and you know have have go out and stay out all night and things like that. That's a great that's a great thing to do. Compete, try to win the world title, do all that. But then you meet a woman. <laughs> you have a kid, you graduate from college, now you've got a $500,000 mortgage. You got you to gotta work, you want to move up in the company, so you, your life changes. And now it's full of responsibility. And games is last place on the rung. You want to do a good job at your work. You want to network with the appropriate people. <laughs> our wives you took your balls. I like that. <laughs> that hey. pretty much sums it up, right? <laughs> uh, our wives took our balls. I I like, yeah, that pretty much, that's the bottom line, right? I bet, I bet the guy's a virgin. <laughs> I mean, that's possible. Come on. That's possible, yeah. But no, I don't. I, how, and, how old and, are you? And, and she'll take your balls, man. Yeah, like, hey, you know, yeah, he, Asians. He, dude. He's, he's talking shit now, but eventually some woman's <laughs> gonna take his balls. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's, you it's know. okay though. You know what I mean? It, Unless you know, a man age, takes his balls. Age does that to you, but so I, I'm. Let's see. Uh, how old am I now? So I'm. I was born in '76, right? So I guess what does that make me now? Shit, I'm 37. Yeah, I'm 37. I won't I say my know. age, but shoot, I'm in my 40s. But uh, so Alex Valle, is that true? It says he here. Alex is 40. Is that true? Uh, no. Oh, okay. It says here uh, Alex is 40, so we got no excuses. But, um, yeah, so anyway, will, will I come back, man? You know what? It's it, it's tough for me. I'll tell you, if I'm going to come back to anything, the type of person I am, man, if I play, like, I got to be full in. Pretty much what yeah. you were saying, right? Like, yep. if I play Street Fighter again, man, I got to be all in. And right now, man, at the at, with where I'm at in my life, man, I, I don't know if I can be all in, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's going to be tough to come back because I, I just I can't play to be, you know, 24th best or something like that. You know, I guess I guess yeah. that would be good, but I just, you know, I don't know if I could do that. This Saturday at Toyota of Santa Maria, youth meets experience in the showdown at the crossroads. Come check out a video game matchup like you've never seen before as nine-year-old gamer prodigy Noah Solis will take on legend Tomo Ohira. <laughs> So, but I'm married now, man. I got the wife right here. She wants to say hi real quick. Hi. <laughs> See, now now these guys are like, oh, damn. Oh, I, I wish I had a cute Asian yeah, girl like that. Yeah. I mean. And then we got, uh, we actually got Jeff's son right here. Say hi, Scott. Come over here and say hi real quick. Look at that. See? So, so hi, Scott. All right. So, you ask us why we're probably not going to play, you know. It just, unfortunately, uh, it just, you know, we've got some other things going on in life. And we can't really dedicate our lives to it. Which, man, there's so many good players these days that you really, to win, you would have to dedicate your life to it, right? I mean, you really would. L let me just sum it up, okay? Yeah. Let's sum it up. We got, we got women and we got games. <laughs> Dude, the women are going to win. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right? Right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, man, we, we had some good memories from Street Fighter. <laughs> you know, women, women eventually won and responsibility and all that. But, man. Yeah, we got... I mean, we the, the best part of Street Fighter is, of course, the beatdown, right? It's like, okay, these guys are across town, whatever, they come. The beatdown is why you play. <laughs> Wh whoever's at the top, you get the mob coming to give the guy a beatdown, <laughs> right? I can't tell you how many people drove to try to give me the beatdown. I oh, mean, I, man. And, the, and it's actually, it was actually enjoyable for me 
to, to stay on top for a while at World's Finest because of all these people that I just love to beat down when they come. Oh, man, I'll tell you, talk about coming. We got one, a lot of buddies over here, but I'll tell you about coming down, man. One of the craziest stories I had, and this was probably 94, and a guy from up north came down to World's Finest Comics, the place where we used to play. He came down, and I wasn't there when he first came down, and he, he told the people that were working there, he said, you know, I want to play Tomo for $100 a game, <laughs> 25 games. And, and, the, and I wasn't there, and the story, you know, it, it got to me. I heard, I was like, hey, there's this guy that wants to play you $100 a game, 25 games. I was like, what? This guy must be good. I mean, he's, I mean, hundred dollars. That's twenty five hundred dollars on the line, right? So eventually, man, we, we got to we got to meet up. But this was ninety four. I mean, I, you know, that's that's probably not as much money now. But ninety four, twenty five hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. So eventually, we played, man. We played uh, we played the twenty five games. I ended up beating him twenty four out of twenty five games. Thank goodness, because <laughs> uh, man, I did not. I was I was probably fifteen and didn't have any money. And uh, yeah, this guy came down, searched me out, man. I lucky enough to beat him and. I thought he was either going to shoot up the place or pay, and luckily he paid. <laughs> he didn't shoot up the place because he was this Asian gangster-looking dude. But that was a crazy story from uh, about 94, man. But let's, let, let, that brings up a, a good point, man. Let's talk about World's Finest for a little bit, how that all got started. Well, how did you get started with World's Finest Comics, which was essentially, before you get started, let me just set it up before you get started. World's Finest Comics, was that was pretty much the hub of tournaments in L.A. from 91 to about 94, w wouldn't you say? For, for all Southern California, plus plus some people came from. And while other you talk about that, too. give me one quick second here. Go ahead, keep talking about that. I met Tomo at this little tiny arcade. I think it was like 14 years old. I think he told me about World's Finest. And then I have videos on my YouTube to explain what happened. But when I first went in World's Finest, it was it was Mike Watson in there. So I think we got the Super Turbo tournament started back up, and of course, the most hit character in the history of Street Fighter. If you don't, if you ever play in a Street Fighter tournament, you can expect 75% of the people are going to use Rue. <laughs> and that's no different today. So they start back the tournament. Yeah, so World's Finest Comics, man, that, that's that's where it all got started. Yep. And uh, man, the way that we got it started, and I don't know if there's people here that want to hear this story or whether or not they're old <laughs> enough to hear about this. But the way that we got it started, man, is, you know, we had we had these tournaments every once a month that we wanted to promote. Every three weeks. Three weeks, three every weeks. three weeks that we wanted yeah. to promote. So what we would do, we literally would open up Yellow Pages, find an arcade in an area, drive to that area, yeah. ask around, you know, hey, what is, where do people play in this area? And, and bring then, them. And then we'd, we'd pass out flyers and say, yeah. hey, come down to our tournament. And that's what right? happened to me, right, when you met me? Yeah. That's because we drove out to Orange County. Yeah. Right? We Yogi's went over to Anaheim, Arcade. went to yeah. Yogi's Arcade. Yeah. Man, I haven't thought about Yogi's Arcade for years. And, and remember, I was like the best in Orange County, and you beat me like 50 in a row. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I couldn't beat you one game. And you, and you kept on yelling at me, screaming at me, saying, oh my God, this 13 year old Wonder Kid. I hate this yeah. little piece of shit. That's right. I, I do remember that. But yeah, that's so. So, man, we'd drive around, we'd go to these arcades, and we'd pass out flyers, man, and, and sooner or later we get, you know, we went from 20 people in the tournaments to 40 to 50, and eventually we'd have a good 80, 90, 100 people, and to us, that was a lot. And that's how it all got started, man. And then we started hearing about people from Vegas and people from Northern California, which I heard a question in there about Thomas Osaki. We can yeah. talk about that in a little, okay. bit, uh -huh. in a little bit here, Thomas Osaki. Yep. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's really kind of how it got started. Um, here in Southern California. And I'm, I'm sure there were, oh, here we go. Tell us <laughs> stories about passing out your business cards, Jeff, in heated situations. What is that? Business cards? Tell us about that. What's that about? Mike said, oh, God. Do we want to talk about that? It Tell was like it. championship edition and, and uh, hyper. There was guys that, like, talked so much crap, like, just they wouldn't stop. And so my way of, like, trying to up the ante on the talk on the crap talking was after I beat their beat them down in the tournament I give them a card <laughs> and it just infuriated people to like so bad like they wanted to kill me like in the parking lot they give me the worst looks and like I can't tell you how much how many confrontations I got to at the arcades because of those stupid business cards <laughs> part of the reason part of the reason I I went to world's finest is because just like you, they banned me from tournaments in Orange County because I would just win. Oh, is that right? So they would, you know, you're banned, right? Because, so so one, one of the tournaments was this place called, uh, uh, dang, I can't remember, on Euclid. It closed down. 
Uh, I went Lauder. in there. I won. I was on Championship Edition. I won with M. Bison. The guy that was second place waited outside. We got in a fist fight. Oh, jeez. Drag out, brawl in the parking lot. I couldn't even show up to a tournament in Orange County. It would just be like people waiting to fight. So that was what was good about World's Finest because Charles like the bouncer, right? I remember Charles like picked up Mike by the neck and <laughs> Mike like spit in his drink and it was <laughs> like, damn. You remember that, Mike? Oh, uh, so for, yeah. those, for those of you guys that don't know, man, Charles was, he was the big guy that, he was really kind of the, the mastermind behold, behind the whole thing, right? Yeah. He brought it all together, really. Yeah. Uh, and I know he picked up Mike, and, and but but for those of you guys that know, Charles Franco, he was the guy that really, he, he's the guy that owned World's Finest Comics, and he was the guy that put all the tournaments together. So, but go ahead, man, talk about your story where you picked him up and, uh, and, and messed them all up and everything. Talk about that. You mean Mike? Yeah. Well, he, Mike. Yeah, Mike and the owner of the place, like, hated each other. I mean, but the owner of the place realized that if Mike Watson doesn't come to World's Finest, like, World's Finest is, like, just lost a lot of equity because Mike is, like, one of the main drivers. People just want to go and just tear Mike apart. Not Me and Mike are just the most hated people at World's Finest, no doubt about it. <laughs> me and Mike. I'd probably, I, I'd probably agree with that. Well, not, you guys just talk nonstop shit all not, day long. Not only and that. Won, so. Yeah, I mean, me and Mike won, but we would – we were rivals with each other, and me and Mike butt heads like no other people. I mean, it was just like a smack talking session nonstop from beginning to end. The owner of World's Finest had a problem with Mike, and Mike was Mike's Mike's got like he he's stubborn. <laughs> so <laughs> Mike's like loogie like a big old loogie, and and uh, the guys like drink, and he drank it. <laughs> and then I think somebody told him. You know, like, hey, Mike Moogie, and then this guy, Charles Franco, was like a bodybuilder, dude. Like, oh, no kidding. Oh, yeah, he's huge. He was humongous, dude. He got like 18-inch arms. Oh, yeah. And, and Mike was just like a 16-year-old kid. Oh, thank you. And he couldn't couldn't really beat the hell out of him. So he took him outside, and he picked him up off the ground, like, by his neck. <laughs> that was an ugly scene, man. Oh, man. So, hey, what is this? So we're going to do a little bit of show and tell. I got some memories for you here. Hey, Mike, do we have Oh, there we go. All right, so what else we got here? All right, we get in here. So we got a little bit of show and tell for you guys. We got some uh, some things for nostalgia's sake. Look at this, man. I digged into the archives. I don't know if the camera can see this. Can you guys see this here? What is this, dog? Watch my uh, watch my headphones here. Okay. We digged into the archives. Read that. What does that say? Okay, Tournament of Champions Street Fighter II Turbo, which is January 15th, 1994, first place. And there you go. So, so we dig, dug into the archives. I don't know if you can see that, wh what's written there. Can you see that? Probably not. Huh? Look at that. Can you guys see that there? So that, that's from January. Oh, what? Oh, we got to change the camera angle. So, well, anyway. Oh, OK, right here? Is it that, is it that camera? No, it's not that no. one. Oh, that one over there. Oh, that's too far. <laughs> you can't Wait, see can it. Can we what use this one? Can we use that camera? I got it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So I don't know if you guys can read that. Terminator Champion, Street Fighter II Turbo, January 15th, 1994, uh, first place. So that's the trophy that I won, uh, 1994, in a tournament up in San Francisco. And it just so happens I even have the original flyer for this oh, tournament. Dang. Look at that. You see that, Mike? Look at this. If you guys can see that. But it says, there can be only one. Bama. If you challenge, they will come. And this was, uh, where's the date on that guy? It's over here somewhere, right, on the side? Look at that, right there. December December 13th, 1993, San Jose Exhibit Hall. Man, look how arrogant this is, dude. <laughs> it's got his name on there. It's got my name on the, on the, uh, like, the, on the guy, tournament flyer. The guy has a video in Blockbuster, and then he's got to have names on flyers, dude. Like, that. that is just... Man, oh. that's prideful. So what else do I got over here? I got a couple other things for you guys. You guys have seen oh, the uh, no. you guys have seen the VHS tape, right? So, so that is an original copy of the VHS tape that's rolling around on YouTube now. Look at it. That's what the, that's what a VHS tape looks looks like for you guys that don't know. What is a VHS that's tape? What is a VHS, VHS VHS tape, right? But look at that. So that's uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but if you look if you read on the front here, you can barely re make it out. But right there, it says featuring. United States number one Street Fighter champion Tomo Ohira. Uh, <laughs> this is the original copy made in 1994. Yep. Man, I'm starting to feel really old over here, but uh, yeah. that's the tape, man. That's the original copy. Probably the only one in existence. Uh, just so you know, I did see this on sale on eBay about four years ago. 
for about $20. So. $20? Just, just so you know. Yeah, I'm holding $20 in my hand right here. I got a little bit more show and tell for you, Jeff. Oh, what else no. do I have in here? This is this is uh, this is even before you, Jeff. I think. Yeah, that's before me. 1992. So put that up. 1992. Tomo O'Hara, Yellow Brick Road, Street Fighter 2. So Yellow Brick Road, and I saw someone earlier asking about uh, a tournament in San Diego, and Yellow Brick Road was a was a uh, is actually an arcade at the La Jolla Village Town Center in San Diego, and they had a big tournament. Um, and that was one of the big tournaments that I played in uh, 1992. So hopefully there's some people back, people on here that are from San Diego that recognize Yellow Brick Road. But I think that was before you started playing, right, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> so the first guy I ever saw do process, his name was Tony Tsui. But before I get into Tony Tsui, let me tell you a quick little story. So I was doing cross-ups myself, but didn't even know I was doing it. I just knew that for whatever reason, if I jumped into somebody really deep, all of a sudden, the guy couldn't block it. So Tony Tsui actually did it back to me, and I, I didn't even know how to block it. I didn't even know what I was doing. But Tony Tsui was the first guy to do it. Tony Tsui, he was really kind of the guy that I learned from. I mean, he was, he was really good. And uh, just so happens, I have this magazine article here. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, and it talks about a, an old tournament. And Tony Tsui is that little dot right there. I don't know if you can see. It's probably kind of hard to see. But he was the first guy to do it. And this was a tournament from 1991. Um, and Tony Tsui, he was one of the guys that created a lot, not only the cross-up, but a lot of the original combos and strategies. He was really one of the innovators of Street Fighter. So there's a little bit of history for you. Oh, cool. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, anytime he's in the corner, he hates it. Oh, I'm back right in the corner. <laughs> What's up with that, dude? So back then you were uh, pretty much known as the best player around. Did you ever believe that there's always someone out there better than you? I don't know if I believed it. I, I definitely thought about it. You guys have worldwide tournaments now, literally, right? right. And this guy, Daigo, or what's his name? Yeah, Daigo. 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 Because back then we didn't do that. You know? It's something so, you dream of, huh? Yeah, but I always thought about it. You know, I didn't know, I always thought there would be someone in Japan that was better or someone that would really just push me, but, you know, it never happened, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I did think about it, sure. So, so back in the day, who was your most memorable foe? This one asshole named Mike Watson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you knew. Dude, you were, you were my biggest, biggest competition. Thank you. You pushed me, there's no doubt about that, and you talked a lot of shit, you were kind of an asshole. So. <laughs> 
So over all your career victories, I'm sure there was a few losses. Would you like to tell us one of your most memorable losses? Oh, they were all memorable. <laughs> Every single loss is memorable. <laughs> is there any one person in particular that you hated losing to or you felt you shouldn't have lost to? <laughs> Anybody I lost to, I always feel like I shouldn't have lost, and it always pissed me off. But it was good, you know, that's, that's what kept you interested. Anytime I lost, that kind of re-motivated me, right? So I know I lost to you at least a few times. I know I lost to Cooney in a tournament. Cooney, crazy, Cooney, crazy, pull your hair out, want to stab himself in the leg after he lost Cooney. <laughs> <laughs> the Cooney, you can describe him what character he plays. Tall Japanese dude, he plays Zangief, really emotional for a Japanese guy. <laughs> and, uh, I remember I lost to him in a tournament and he, he was just so happy, he was just celebrating. And uh, that was that was motivational for me. Um, but yeah, every loss was, was memorable, definitely. And out of everything you've gained or lost from Street Fighter, what do you think you might miss the most ever since you retired? Just the competition, the competition and the camaraderie. You know, hanging out with all the guys, being, being friendly with everyone, you know, Yeah, that was the thrill, and of course, you know, the biggest thrill was winning.